Hey, Tactical Painter out here in the Suits Crafting Leather Work and Casting Shop. Been doing a whole bunch of casting this week. Haven't hardly gotten out actually to the wood shop a whole lot this week. But going to be getting out there uh, next week. I've got a couple of orders that just came in for some pens that are going to be a lot of fun. I'm pretty excited about it. Let me just show you what I've got working on so far. So first one that I got up, I just pulled this one out of the pressure pot. This one is a, it's a mother of pearl blank. So it uses the interference blue and interference green powders. And then we left out the red and the violet. And so this is just green and blue. My customer wanted um, primary blue, 70%, and then uh, secondary green at 30%. So this is going to be a fun one. Put some black swirls in here. And so this is going to be a mother of pearl blank. And then we also are going to be doing a blue opal inlay on this one. So I picked up some more of these. These are... Uh, Mariana's uh, opal inlay from Easy Inlay. Picked these up at Woodcraft today. $19.99 for these. And so we're going to be doing the Mother of Pearl blank with blue opal inlay. So these are going to be a fun one. I'm really excited to see how this one turns out. And I'll be doing a video on this one to see how well those two go together. I had another customer um, wanting another editor pen done. Um, that one is going to be an editor pen as well. And then this one's going to be an editor pen. My customer contacted me and wanted one that was rust and copper. And I was like, rust and copper? That's kind of a tough one to, to cast up, rust and copper. So I was like, well, I can figure out how to do that. And so I took actually um, three different pigments um, and mixed those together in order to make rust. And I won't tell you what they are because, well, to be honest, I should have written them down because I didn't and now I don't remember. Um, but I know that there was like a blue russet and a red russet and there was another one in there If I had to go through and do it again, I'd be able to find them just fine. Um, but then for the um, Copper color um, I actually had This Marin copper body paint that I got um, a while back when I was looking for replacement for the Illumilite silver metallic powder um, I found these uh, Marin body paint pigments. These are a really really fine pigment powder um, and the silver is almost a direct replacement for the Illumilite silver um, additive that you can put in with your resins and they also have copper they've got lavender they've got rose gold they've got regular gold um, and then they had uh, bronze and so I used some of this copper and then I also added uh, pearl X copper to it and you can see here it makes a pretty darn good copper rendering and so you kind of see there's like a gradient going here. So this one is all copper. And then I dip just one of these little dealy bobs, a little barbecue skewer, in the uh, rust color. And then I just kind of swirl that in, same as I do for the black with the mother of pearl. Just a little bit of rust, swirl, little rust, swirl it in, little rust, swirl it in. And then um, I did the same thing with this rust one. I dipped into the copper, swirl it in, into the copper, swirl it in, into the copper, swirl it in. So these two are going to have... Um, that opposing colors as just like lines through them and then these two in the middle um, I took both colors and I just poured zigzags through them and then on uh, let's see on this one here um, I took a stir stick and I did a zigzag back and forth all the way up and then back down the blank and so this one's going to have um, those zigzag lines cutting through but then this one here I actually went through I did the zigzag and then I went through and swirled kind of like a whipping action like you would do with your eggs in the morning. Just kind of whipped and beat it. So it's going to have really, really tight swirls of the uh, copper and the rust colors in that one. And that's the one that my customer ended up choosing was that swirling pattern. And so that's going to be a fun one. So we're going to be turning that one up for an editor pen here in the near future as well. And the rest of those, I'll decide what I want to do with those because rust and copper, not a color I get requested a whole lot. So those might be going into the cast off bin. So you guys might be able to pick those up yourself here in the near future. Also, I had to cast up quite a few of these uh, Cosmos blanks. This one is a uh, two inch in diameter by three inch long Cosmos blank. Looks really neat. It's actually pretty see through as you can see there. But then it's got like uh, the black um, structure in the middle from where I actually go down with a stir stick and I pull the black up from the bottom up into the inside so that it kind of reflects the colors and the, of the shift powders and things um, into the blank itself once it's turned. And so really super exciting. These are a lot of fun. If you haven't gotten one of these yet and you do any larger blanks, you'll want to check these out because they're pretty awesome. So again, you can see 
that structure in the middle there. And those are just going to be like wisps and ribbons and all sorts of things. And then here you can actually get that color shift. So there it's blue uh, in the middle and then around to the edge you can see the violet and red as it transitions. And if we tip that back and change the angle of the light you can see it transitions to purple and red. Really, really fun blanks. And then I also put, um, and there you can see that I've got like glitter and I've got, um, I've started adding actually the white flash powder that I add to the black. I've been adding to the colored resin and that gives it an even better starry effect along with the angelite holographic glitter that I've always been putting in there. So you've got an angelite holographic glitter and then you've also got white flash powder which are large flecks of, of white um, basically pearl powder but the same size as the holographic glitter so you get even more of a starry effect out of the colored section not just the holographic stars so it's really an exciting change I was really happy with how they've been turning out so I'm gonna be continuing that more into the future now if you follow me on Instagram you'll already have seen that I have been casting up bullet casings I've been filling them with resin and I've been putting in um, red white and blue into these um, bullet casings and I've got these are 5.7 by 28 and then I've also got uh, 5.56 and I've been casting these up um, over the last few weeks I've got three batches of these now and I've even got a full tin that are ready to go and get color put into them so I'm gonna get all these cast up and I'm gonna do some exciting stuff with it I don't really want to talk too much about it yet um, but it's been an interesting process because like I've got to anneal the brass which means that I get it up to above 600 degrees and let it sit there for an hour so the brass will actually soften with steel when you heat it up you know to higher temperatures it'll actually harden um, but with brass it'll actually soften when you get up to those higher temperatures so you'll be able to cut these brass with uh, your standard turning tools which is going to be fantastic um, and even just with my regular old pocket knife um, I'm actually able to score and cut the brass with my pocket knife just out of my pocket and I need to touch up the edge on it. So that tells you a lot that just being able to cut it and carve it with a pocket knife and take shavings off with it tells you it's going to be soft enough to turn up on your lathe. Now with these I would recommend using uh, carbide because you're going to have less chance of getting a catch and then getting a uh, chip out especially like if you use the negative rake scrapers on it. Um, you might still be able to use like a, a regular negative rake scraper, um, you know, uh, high speed steel or any of that should work just fine. Um, but I highly recommend using a negative rake scraper and scraping at these instead of cutting at them with uh, gouges because you still could get a catch because you're going from resin to brass to epoxy to brass to resin and those different material transitions could cause a catch and then you chunk one of those brass casings right out of it. Now these brass casings have been tumbled. You can see there they are um, a pretty nice finish on those still but they're not like bright reflective brass. That's on purpose. Um, so I did tumble these with some ceramic tumble media and then I tumbled it with some walnut and then I tumbled it with some corn cob in order to make it look nice in appearance. You can definitely tell like that's a bullet casing but I didn't run it through like a polishing machine because I didn't want it to come out bright and shiny I want that textured surface to still be on the brass that way the resin will adhere to the outside and to the inside of the brass casing and it'll have a mechanical bond to all those little tiny scrapes and scratches and divots and stuff left over by the polishing uh, process that it did go through and then I throw them in a um, ultrasonic cleaner in order to clean off all of the dust and leftover um, compounds and things that I use in order to uh, polish it up. So they are fully clean before I put any epoxy in them and then uh, these are going to be really exciting. Now these are um, once fired brass so the primers are still there and you can see that primer divot from where the firing pin hit it. Um, so the primers are going to be in there too um, but they should get filled in with resin because the, the epoxy that I'm using is actually pretty thin and it should get down into all those primer pockets, fill them in, and then I put them under pressure, which is why you can see the resin there is actually kind of concaved. It uh, domes on the inside because I overfill them. I'll put a photo here. I overfill them and then I put them in the pressure pot, which causes it to drop back down. Um, so it should fill into that 
primer pocket um, on all of those brass casings. There might still be voids, but you should be able to fill it in with CA glue or whatever you want to choose uh, to fill those voids in with. But these are going to be fun. I will say I'm, I'm making some handle blanks for these. Going to be looking at doing some pen blanks in the future once I determine whether or not these handles that I'm going to be making are going to turn out okay or not. So fingers crossed, but I think these are going to do just fine. These are going to be a lot of fun. So for the handle blanks that I'm making, I actually was at Woodcraft picking up those uh, Mariana opal inlay material. And while I was there, they actually had these lizard blanks molds, which was kind of exciting because I was looking for like a one inch um, mold cavity. Now this one is six inches long, so I don't quite need that long. The one that I'm doing is only going to be like one inch by four inches. So I might throw a spacer or something in there just to make it so I don't waste as much resin. Um, but using this, I'll be able to drop the brass down in. Um, and have them laying sideways. That way as the resin fills up, any bubbles that could get stuck around that primer pocket rim or right in that concave portion where the epoxy has sunken down into the brass uh, casing, that bubble will be able to work its way out. So I wanted to use PVC actually standing upright and then I realized like if I do that then I'll have to like fill it sideways at an angle and pour it down in so that those bubbles can escape, escape and then tip it upright and get it level. That way the bubbles can rise to the top and then finish pouring it. And it was like a multi-step process I really didn't feel like doing. So I was really excited when I found these lizard blanks at Woodcraft. And it shouldn't have surprised me because Phil, one of the guys that works with lizard blanks, used to actually work at that Woodcraft. And these are actually made right here in Oregon. Um, just, I mean, like a 20 minute drive from the Woodcraft that I went to out in Tigard. And so, really happy to get this, try this out. This is my first Lizard Blanks mold um, that I've ever used. And so I might even get some more of these in the future. Um, this one was like 25 bucks for this one inch by one inch by six inch long mold. Um, it said for pen blanks, I've never cast a pen blank that big before, but I'm sure people do all the time. Uh, but it's actually like the interior cavity here is like one and an eighth or one and a quarter tall, um, which is good because when you put it in a pressure pot, that level sinks. So you can fill it all the way up and then when it sinks down you still end up with an inch worth of resin. So really excited to try this one out. Um, it's going to be it's going to be a good one. I, I think you guys are going to like it. I'm I'm kind of I'm being reserved on what I want to make because I want it to be a surprise and I have no idea how it's going to turn out myself. So I don't want to get disappointed if I shared it with too many people. People start asking like, "Hey, how did it turn out?" and it didn't. So I'm uh, holding that to myself for now, but it's going to be good if it turns out. You guys will just have to wait and see. Well, that's it for now. My wife's going to be going in for surgery tomorrow, so I got to go run through the shower, get some uh, fresh sheets and blankets and stuff put on my bed so we can go to bed tonight. Getting up early in the morning in order to go take her in for surgery. Going to be doing an emergency surgery, so keep her in your thoughts and prayers, and I wish everyone uh, the best of days, and we are going to get going. So thanks so much for joining me out in the up today. This is Tactical Painter out in the Suits Crafting Casting Shop, signing out.